Learn to build a powerful in-app chat, video and audio experience for your React Native application with Stream. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev back with a new React Native tutorial on building a super powerful live video, audio and chat experience in your application using Stream. GetStream.io is the sponsor of today's video. I've used Stream before. It is an unbelievable powerful platform and SDK for not only React Native. In the past I've used it with Angular but we're gonna focus on React Native today and it added new capabilities for video and audio recently and it has a powerful React native SDK. So you can check out the extensive SDKs on GetStream.io and all the features that it offers. In the first part of this video we will actually focus on an API. Why are we doing an API? Well Stream has no internal user authentication built in. So we're gonna do a quick little node API with Express that connects to Stream using secret keys. So we don't want to do this from our React Native app. We want to do this in a server environment. That's a quick story. We're gonna talk about that and how it works to create our tokens. In the next part we gonna set up our expo application with React Native, we're gonna introduce all of the packages and we're gonna work on the general sign up experience and we're gonna talk about authentication context and how we can provide the tokens to our application to then in the final part focus on building an actual chat and video experience. We're gonna have a live video call that works really, it is like three lines of code that we need at that point in our application to build the live stream and the video functionalities and that is just unbelievable to me how easy easy the stream SDK makes this stuff. After that we're gonna get into the customization, we're gonna see how we can change the video call, how we can place a chat super easily and naturally right next to the video and then we're gonna have everything together to build your own meeting application. Maybe you're gonna do like an internal company tool where people can join different groups or you can have quick hangouts with people, I don't know, but that would certainly be possible with this feature. So again this video is sponsored by stream, check it out at getstream.com you can grab the link to all the code right below the video and if you got the github repository open let's dive into the build all right so let's start with our node api why are we actually doing this well to finally use the React Native UI with video and audio from stream, we need to authenticate our users. In theory, there is the option to actually also use an anonymous or a guest user with the stream video client. However, in most cases, you want to have an authenticated users and stream does not uh, automatically handle your users. So you need your own logic for that. Why is that the case? Well, we got Clark, we got Superbase, we got Firebase, we got any other API where you created your users and stream is focusing really on the capabilities of their SDKs video audio and chat so long story short we need to generate tokens we need to generate our own tokens that we can then pass to the client so later when we get to our app we can do something like this where well, we got an API key that's in our dashboard that's not a problem where well, we have a user object also not a big problem but this token should come from our own API and that's what we're gonna develop so we just actually need to implement two functions we need a little register and a little login so we're gonna do part of this real and part fake. Um, I will show you what we're gonna do and <clears throat> how we're gonna do it. But let's get started with uh, in a new folder. Do I already have a folder? Nope. Uh, let's do a folder API and then I will go into API. And then I will start a new npm init dash y to accept all of the questions. Uh, then I will run code dot which will open Visual Studio Code or you can also just open Visual Studio Code in any other way that you prefer. And for your pleasure I will also zoom in about four times here. Mm, there we go. And then we got our app. Okay, well, that is not a very pretty note app. <laughs> We're gonna install some dependencies now. Uh, so let's go ahead and install .env. I think in the future we actually don't need .env, but right now we need it to load an environment file, bcrypt, because I wanna give you the, well, the feeling <laughs> of having done some kind of encryption for the password. We need Express to start the API and we need the stream chat SDK on the server. That's probably one of the most important pieces here. Then we need a few other files. We need a .env file. 
Thank you, Visual Studio Code, for never focusing that file when I want it. So we need that env file. Uh, we need to add a few things. We need the port. We need our stream API key and we need the stream API secret key. Uh, so here we go. Where do we find them? Well, inside our stream organization. Um, I will actually create a new app for you. Let's do this. Let's create here. I'm in the stream dashboard right now where you can manage your apps. So I'll click create app. Um, uh, my meetings. I don't know, I will call this video so I can just know that it's video. Where do I want to have the feeds? Actually, I will not really use feeds, but just in case I will use e West. Uh, and I don't want to clone any existing app. I will use the development environment for now and I will hit create app. That should give me my keys. So here is already right here in the center my access key and here is your secret key. Uh, up here you can also find your app ID. I think we need that later, but not right now. So let's copy over the app key. That's a stream key. Um, my secret, that's this one. And port for my application locally, I will use port 3K. Good, that's a good start. Um, how can we confirm if we created users? Well, under chat messaging, we got an explorer. So here is the explorer, if you focus chat messaging. And there you find users, and I have this initial user, which is my like admin user that created actually this application. And we should hopefully see very soon a few more users in here. Okay. Um, with that in place, uh, once again, telling you that you can find all the code linked below this video, also the API here uh, in which you can find the different packages because we need a few and I'm going to bring them in as uh, so they're kind of boring to type. Wasn't there like a copy raw? I thought download raw file, copy raw file. Yeah, that's it. Um, so let's create this notemon.json and pa pass this in. Why are we doing this? Well, we're gonna have a new file at source slash index TS. Um, so we're gonna use TypeScript for the API and Notemon will help us to automatically reload that file. Also, I think Note is also adding that capability. So in the future, we probably also don't need Notemon anymore. Um, additionally, we need a tsconfig.json. As I said, I wanna use TypeScript and I wanna put in some default settings for our TypeScript compilation. And then within the package JSON, we also want to update a few things. So in the package JSON, I want to change the scripts block. And the script block currently looks like this. And now it should look like this. And you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that we also use rimref um, to delete our build folder. And we're running Notemon. And so far, we actually haven't installed that. So let's do this. <coughs> and the good thing here is that we only need this as development dependencies. So <coughs> we need the types for express, the types for node, TS node, and then notemon rimref, and the types for bcrypt. Let's wait until this is finished. Mm -hmm. Well, that was faster than expected. Anyway, um, those are all the dependencies. Oh, no, I did not hit save before. Oh, no, I hate that when it happens. <coughs> I hate it when I install something and don't save it. But now we got this. We got the TS config. We got the Notemon. Uh, we got the environment. And we got the package JSON. Let's see. I think we got everything in place to actually start the server. So let's do this first in our index.ts. We're going to import express from, uh, from what? Of course, express. Actually, we need to import it like this. It's still early morning. Let's do this. Um, then we need to import uh, dot env from dot env and then we can already call dot env dot config which will load our default env file. You can also pass in a path but we're gonna just use that default env path. Good. Um, then I want to grab the different informations from uh, the different information from my process env and I also had the stream API key and I also had the stream API secret in the env. So that's what we're going to extract. Then we can start our server simply by calling express and we can tell our app to also use JSON. Um, that's just the default setup that I like to use. Uh, finally, uh, we can run app.listen and we want to listen on our specific port. And once we got this, we're just going to print out 
uh, that we're listening on this port. So this is really the most basic part um, about creating this API. And we can now simply run our script, which was uh, npm run start dev. Okay, and we see a lock. Stover is listening on port 3k. Good. With that in place, let's implement uh, two functions or two API routes. Uh, one of those will be, uh, let's, let's follow this setup here, but one of them will be register and the other one will be login. And as I want to make this as easy as possible for you, I will actually use like an in-memory uh, cache database, whatever. Like we, we're just going to fake this a bit, but still use everything in a realistic way from stream so you can see how it works. Um, just for um, for reference, initially I wanted to do this with Superbase uh, and Cloud Functions. However, there was a little problem with Dino and Cloud Functions. It's probably going to be fixed in the future. But then I went back to this because this is actually even easier uh, for you to understand what's going on and to actually see what we got. So um, what I want to do is I want to create this interface for a user. Well, the user has an ID, an email and a hash password. And I will just locally here keep an array of users. So that means if I register, I'm going to put just a user in here and then I'm gonna get a token from stream and return that. And for login, I will just check if the user is in that array and then return it. What does that mean? Well, if we restart the server, all the users will be gone. Of course, you can persist this with your own API, whatever you use, MongoDB, SQL database, Postgres, you can do it just like you want, but we're gonna have an easier time if we just go through an example like this. So let's start by extracting the email and the password from our request body. And then I will add a try block. Uh, and I will also add a little catch here. So in case we got any error, uh, I will return a 500 error and saying, uh, well, error message, mm, let's just say, um, I mean, I got full control. I can, I can, I will just say user already exists or something. Uh, then it doesn't have to be true all the time. We can also catch some other uh, issues up front. So for example, if we wanna add a little security check, we could make sure that email and password are required. Uh, and I would also recommend that we set up something like the password min length should be six, otherwise we would get an issue. And then we can also make sure that the user does not yet exist. So we can just find an existing users from our users by checking if the email already exists. And if we already have an existing user, we return this. So we have like three little checks in here now that will make sure that we're not registering really any user and again and again. And then we can do um, some fun to hash the password. So to do that, we're gonna import um, gen salt sync and hash sync from bcrypt. And with that, we will also create a salt here because if you create the salt in the function like I did, um, it will actually be created all the time again. So I will just create this once when the server starts. Uh, yeah, it's not the best way, but in our case, I still wanted to make sure that I'm not even if you use this fake API that you store your actual passwords in here, I don't want to have them. So I will just salt them uh, and, and store the hashed passwords in uh, my array here. Um, I think there's one more thing missing and that's the actual stream functionality. But let's let's do all the, all the other stuff that we have to do uh, before so we can then focus on what we have to do with stream. So let's create a hashed password by using hash sync with the password the user passed in and our salt. And then we can uh, create a, f yeah, we can create a new user, mm, but I don't want to use the ID one. I actually want to create an ID up front. So let's say uh, this is, yeah, math random to string 36 uh, slice. Actually not. Um, what is slice? Uh, start the index of the beginning. Um, how does the that look like? If I put this into the lock, um, and that's actually a good point to try out our API. Uh, you can use any testing tool you want. I will just use um, 
the Postman VS Code extension, which I recently found. So within here, I want to make a post request. Uh, let's see, a post request to localhost 3k register. And as the body, I want to put in, where can I define the body? Uh, 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 params body mm, here. Uh, I want to select raw JSON and then something like this email password. And we'll hit send. And from the logs, uh, uh, um, uh, does, it, does it actually register? Um, yeah, I defined a get. It is a post, Simon. I don't know. Okay, again. And yeah, you don't get a response, uh, but we see an ID for the user would be created, a fake ID. So that's all I wanted to see at this point. Uh, my API call, we're going to reuse that in a second. For now, it won't work because we don't return anything. But now I know that this will actually create a random, somewhat random ID. Uh, of course, in a real production world, you would do this in a different way. But now, with a new user, I can just go back to my index file and push this user into my array of users. So that's how I would create the user. Now the interesting part begins where we create our actual stream token. So to create and authenticate our user, uh, I think this is all the front end information for the stream token, right? Mm -hmm. I should be able, okay, yeah, I'm in the video and audio docs. I should probably go into the chat messaging docs. Uh, um, where's the docs, docs, docs? Mm, um, Node.js right here, oh please. So generating user tokens, we can import stream chat from stream chat and then we can uh, create a token. So that is what we are after. We want to create a token and we also want to sync our users to stream and therefore we're going to use the absurd user. So absurd users and create token are actually the two most important calls that we need from the stream API. And no matter what you implement or where you implement the authentication, that is what you want to do. So let's begin by actually importing stream, putting it up here, and then we can create our new client. So we can create a new stream client by calling stream chat dot get instance. So this changed a bit in the past. Um, I'm going to find different examples. Uh, but I think this is the, the up-to-date version of how you do it. You pass in the key, which is the stream API key. Mm. And then for the second option, you pass in actually uh, get instance. Does it work like this? Okay, yeah, it, it will be mad because this it might be undefined. Um, yeah, we just need to pass in the key and the secret. I think that's, uh, yeah, key and secret. Those are the first two options we need to pass. Okay, this is our client that will help us to interact with stream. So let's see, we got our new user here. Let's use now the function that we want to call exactly client.absurd. Uh, and for client absurd, I will pass in ID email and for the name I will just reuse the email so we, we did not capture the username I will just use it like this uh, wait uh, we need to make this async okay then this will absurd our user after we've done this we will also immediately create the token so let's create a token by calling client dot create token and then we just need to pass in the user ID and that's actually the same line. So this line will be relevant for our login in a minute as well. Okay, at this point we should have the token and we can finally uh, return some JSON. Um, yeah, let's return the token and also the user with the ID and the email. Okay. Let's hit save. Uh, Notemon should reload the server and we should be able to register our user again. At this point, uh, only the default user is here. Now, um, if I make my call again like this, um, I need to, how can I cancel the call? 
uh, where is the button to cancel the call here? Uh, um, um, could you please just like just cancel this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's no option to cancel this. Oh my! Do I really have to do like a new call now? Oh come on! It can't be true. Can I do something down here? Is there something? Yeah, there's the cancel. Oh my, I was already. Okay, so again, let's hit send. Let's see. And the response is a token and a user. Nice. And we go back here. Let me zoom in. Probably you can even see this better now. We have created this user uh, with the name, Simon Galaxy's email, uh, some default options, band faults, online faults, updated role is user, and this is the ID, uh, so S5 something, and that's also the ID of my user. So if I would now lock this out, I would have a user with that information and a hashed password in my user's array. That means if I now reload my app, everything is gone again, right? Uh -huh. Now, well, anyway, we should be able to do this real quickly. So. Uh, that means if we register a user from the application, we're gonna get back the auth token and just can continue with the login and stuff. If we um, perform a login, we're gonna also send the email and password, of course. So just like before, we're gonna destructure the body into email and password. And then I will try to find the user by calling users.find. And I will just check if there is a user with the email in my users array. I can then create, once again, a hashed version of that password. Um, so I think I need to hash this, um, hashed password, using the function again. And then I can compare the different user hashes. So that I am not comparing like your 12356 password to 12356 or whatever. Uh, we're creating the hashed version. So if we don't have a user or the user hashed password uh, is unequal to the new hashed password, then we're going to return invalid credentials. That means if we are past that, we can once again call our create token using the user ID. And then we can return basically the same JSON like we had before. We're going to return the token and also a bit of information about the user. So let's get back um, into this. Um, I can try to make a login first. That should fail. Uh, cannot post login. Oh, did I make the same mistake? Mm, yeah. So both of these calls should be post. All right. This will return an invalid credentials because my user array is now empty again. Um, my logic again here is not great. Usually you have your own database connected and then you would do the check against that. Uh, also, I would like to remove this user um, because during testing here, uh, I'm creating a few users and I don't wanna uh, blow this up. So login is not yet working with the body that I tried to send. Uh, the body I tried to send looks like uh, like this. So it's the same body. Now let's do the register first. I call my register. This already gives me a token. In the real scenario in the application, I could continue because I have the stream token and users could join my chat. But if at a later point, I would now call my login function, I would also finally be able to get a token. So if I change anything in here, I would get back invalid credentials. And if I change this to be true, once again, I get back my information. So we have now a very simple API created for stream. You can reuse this really in a lot of cases. The most important part is that you upsort your users into the stream database. So you can then actually create a token for these users. And with that token, we will be able uh, to use both the chat and also the video messaging from stream uh, if the user has the token. So let's continue now. Um, oh no, I forgot something. Um, this is running locally. Uh, and I want to show you something before we continue with the app. So just a minute more. Um, what I actually did is I deployed this Node API uh, to da -da -da -da, Railway. Um, I don't want to uh, advertise Railway uh, 
Um, it's just what I currently use. I use Heroku in the past. I used Fly.io. I used Render.com. So far, I think that Railway is pretty easy to use. You just create your GitHub repository, connect it with Railway, and then you can almost instantly serve your API. So in my case, I have it up here, the fitness API. Again, it is just connected here. It will use the automatic port. I think after you've done your first deployment, you want to go to settings and under networking, make sure that you have a public networking API. So that means this right here, uh, we'll copy this out and do like a new one. Um, this right here will be the API that we will use in my application. We can even try this out right here. So let's see. Um, yes, HTTP Railway App Login, if I use it. Yeah, I'm getting invented credentials. Great. This is not great. <laughs> uh, I think I used like a fake account or something. Oh, well, uh, uh, well, maybe I forgot something. But anyway, uh, we're going to use that API so we can create our own user again. Maybe we'll just restart this so the data is clear again uh, and then we can reuse this. But of course, you can host your Node API wherever you want. I just want to tell you that once you use this with a real device and we need to use this with a real device, it becomes a bit more complicated to use local host. So you need to expose your local node API to your device in the same network. Yes, that works, but um, in most cases you need it public as well uh, anyway. So here is my node API that I will use and now we can continue with the Expo app. All right, now let's start our application with the stream audio, video and chat SDK. So we're going to use everything and that means we're going to install a lot of things in our application. So you can check out the documentation. Uh, you don't have to use React. You can actually pick React Native and you see there's a lot else going on. And in the installation, we're going to pick Expo. So you can also do this with just React Native, of course, but I encourage you usually to use Expo. And then we're going to have to do a dev client build. So we're going to do some fun stuff and you're going to see that you're actually not really locked in with Expo anymore. Here are a few installation commands. Um, uh, you can read everything in the documentation about all the different packages being used and how we can uh, add the config plugin. So let's do all of this. But first of all, we need a new app. You see, these are all the installation commands I used. And once again, I encourage you also to check out the um, GitHub repository where you can also find uh, the file with these installation commands. So the first will bring up a new Expo application with uh, the Expo router. Then we're going to install the chat packages. So these are the packages for stream chat. Uh, so you're going to see stream chat expo, stream chat. I think we, we need both because we are importing a few things. There are a lot of other installations like the file system, expo image picker, media library, gesture handler. We also have reanimated. So we need to take care of adding that accordingly. Then for the live stream, we have already seen uh, that was the one I just had open like a minute ago. Uh, these are the commands here for live stream. And then I also added some other stuff. So basically this is all you need for stream. Um, then I also wanted to have a loading spinner overlay on the toast message. That was just for some, some minor stuff and Expo secure store to manage our authentication stuff and Expo sharing to later share something. I also wanted to use the Gorham bottom sheet to present a bottom sheet. You can find a video about how to use that uh, extensively also on this channel. Um, we're going to use it to bring up the chat in case we're on a small device because we're going to actually develop kind of a universal app that works on iPad and also on mobile phones or tablets and phones. And finally, I will install the Expo dev client. And then I want to do an Expo pre-build, but I'm going to do this in a second. For now, I want to do a quick configuration because in the Babel config, we have to put in React Native reanimated as well. Uh, and there are a few other things that we should do before we do the pre-build. So um, as we've seen here in the installation commands, we also need a config plugin. So we can copy this block here um, and then heat over to the app.json. And under plugins, we can add a second one. Uh, that should look like this. So for the stream video React Native SDK, uh, we are requesting camera and microphone permissions. 
Now, there is something else that I noticed. Um, I think for Android at the time using this, uh, so at the time using this, I was using, um, yeah, I don't know if those versions give you any sense. It's probably more about uh, Expo React Native and Android. So I had a problem with Android and the build was failing. And here's what I did. After uh, finding some GitHub repositories, I managed to add this. I think in the Notify plugin, there was a problem. You would see that lock. You can just try it out without this. And if you encounter the problem, here is what probably fixes that. So that will load um, something from your actual node modules uh, because it didn't find like a lip or something. Something was wrong with that <laughs> in the uh, when I gave this a try. Additionally, we can also add an environment file because we want to connect to our server. So what we need is uh, the expo public stream access key. This is the usual access key you see in applications. So the public key uh, that should be where it is let's go to video overview. Um, no, I don't want that. I want to zoom out so I can actually see something uh, here. That should be uh, my key or was it the app ID? No, the app ID is something different. This is the public key. And then what I also want to bring in is the server URL. As we've seen in the first part, I have now deployed my server here. So I will just use it right from there to make life a bit easier. Um, we can run this. Um, how do we want to run this? Mm, I kind of want to do the, the pre-build now because that's what we need for uh, stream to work anyway. So. Let's see again, uh, where was my installation command? I think the last one was npx expo pre-built. Right, npx expo pre-built. We were going with that. Then we'll ask some questions. What would you like your Android package name? And I will just go with the defaults. If you develop your app, you might already have a package name or specify the one in the form like com, your company, app name. Um, this will then create my native projects for Android and iOS. So I can use the native code that comes with uh, the stream SDK. And then at some point I should be able to also deploy this to my device. So just in case you've never used this, you can read up about this in the expo documentation about development builds. Um, you can do a development build with EAS as well. So this would build your application uh, in the cloud. You would then specify some parts in your EAS JSON, but if you want to, you can also just do it locally. Um, do they have like commands here for uh, doing it? No, not really, right? Um, but we will be able to see this anyway. Okay, we did this. So at this point, we should technically be able to run NP x expo run ios and run android and if you pass in dash dash device we can also deploy to a device but for now i would actually be fine to run this in the simulator um, because we're not yet using stream so that would probably make it a bit easier i mean we could deploy it to a device but i'd rather use it like this for the moment mm. Um, do we already want to continue while this takes place? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, let, let, let's just, let's just uh, keep this in the background and continue with the app. So this is a new app. I use the tabs template, as you can remember, and I will now remove most of this. I just like this because it comes with a setup for Expo Router. Now I don't have to specify all the other stuff, but yeah, I will actually remove most of it. I will just keep the layout file. Everything else will be gone. Um, I will also remove everything that's here in the components folder and for colors, I don't really want to implement what they got. I'll just change this to have a specific primary and secondary color so we can reuse that across our application. Okay. Uh, isn't this already, no, uh, this is still compiling. So let's go to the topmost file and let's put an index file next to it. Uh, come on. Where's my snippet? Hello, faster, please, faster. Okay, that will be the first page that comes up. And within my layout, I can now define the layout for that file. 
Um, we don't really need most of the stuff in here. So I will get rid of that and we're gonna do our own root layout down here. Mm, I also, yeah, I wanna do this in a, in a kind of different way. So let's rename stuff a bit. Um, that's the thing, if you use a template like this, uh, there are a lot of assumptions made and you probably actually want to do it in a different way. So what I want is I want to have like a const root layout. Oh, that's good. My simulator just came up. So that means something happened. Uh, yeah, looks like our development build. So that's important here. Development build. It's not just Expo Go. Wants to open meetings app. Yeah, so install it. And then we have pretty much the same, but we're not using Expo Go. We have our own development built now that we can use. That's pretty, pretty exciting, actually. Uh, so here we go. Uh, is this my stuff? Yeah, I didn't have the file initially, so I messed up some, some file stuff here. But in a second, that should work again. So bear with me. Root layout um, equals, and that's just the, the way I like to use it. And then I will have the export default root layout down here. And within the root layout, we're gonna return uh, something because we're gonna wrap our app in a few providers. Uh, the first we can actually already uh, add, which is the gesture handler root view with a flex one. Uh, and then we can close that one. And inside we're gonna have our actual layout. So this is required to also make this work with authentication with a stream SDK. And I found this setup to be somewhat easier. Um, now in here I will add a simple block in which I want to return a slot from Expo Router. Okay, and then I will put the initial layout in here. And then we just need to add our gesture handler root view which comes from, oh no, you can't do this automatically. That was, you should have been able. So that should be the gesture handler root view. That's required, I think for our chat. Um, and as far as I know, we should put import react native gesture handler also at the top. I think I had this before and it solved a problem. So let's see. Okay, we messed up everything, but now we have our app wrapped in a layout uh, or we have a, just a slot here and we have this page which we can change. So up here, um, where is it? Up here, you can see it's displaying my page. Uh, we're just not yet using any kind of like stack layout. We could easily do this. So I could just call this here a stack from Expo Router, hit save, and then we would see it looks like this. If you wanna fine tune this, pretty easy. Just put in stack.screen, name is the file name. So that would be index in this case. And then you could have options, and the options being something like title um, or I don't know. Yeah, let, let, let's actually do header shown, header shown fault because this is becoming our um, our login page. Good. So um, here we go. We have the index file wrapped in a stack navigation. Uh, we can see this. We have pre-built. So we actually uh, added a lot of important things already in this application. Um, where do we want to continue? I think the best way to continue would be to now prepare the login view. And once we got the login view, we can add our authentication uh, authentication context. Did I spell it correctly? I don't know. Uh, to the app. I'll take a sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That was still warm, actually. That's good. Usually it's already cold at this time. So um, here we go. On the login page, I definitely want to import my spinner. Uh, didn't I install this? I'm, I'm pretty sure I installed that one. If I, if I don't have that one, then I have a problem. Because I actually, I think I ran all the commands. React Native loading spinner overlay. What's your problem with that? Uh, do I need to install like some, some kind of typing now? No. Uh-oh, I hope I did not forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this page, I want to create a view. Uh, I want to have some styles. So React Native style sheet goes down here, and I'll add the style sheet up here, and start with some container styling. That should flex one. Have some padding around my page of twenty, 
and justify my content in the center. Good. I will actually wrap this whole view in a keyboard avoiding view. Keyboard avoiding view. Why am I doing this? Well, we have a login page, we have input forms, and usually that's a problem with React Native and uh, other tools is that once you type into a field, it opens up the keyboard and the keyboard is on top of your inputs and you can't see the inputs and you can't see what you're typing. So that's usually pretty bad behavior and therefore we're using the keyboard avoiding view. There are different ways to solve this. I think this one works in this example pretty good. Um, the default code usually looks like this for the behavior you want to check. Uh, oops. If the platform is equal to iOS. And then you want to set the behavior to padding and otherwise, uh, oops, otherwise you want to set it to hate for Android. That's just a default setup. Additionally, what I want to say is I want to use my container styling. So now it's putting everything in the center of the page. Um, I don't know. Um, I also would like to show you the preview on my uh, tablet. How can I do this? Mm, I could open a tablet preview. I kind of hate that. Um, I I feel like I want to run this. Let's see. I will kill this for now. And I will say n3x expo run dash dash device. And then it should ask me about which device I want to use usually. And once it runs on the device and it starts the dev client uh, as we've seen here before, I should also be able to reuse it on the simulator again. So I will now use my iPad. I will also later deploy it to your phone so we can have like a cool live streaming experience um, or live video experience with different devices. Uh, for now, it will hopefully deploy this to my device. And then once we got that, uh, the preview here will work again. So we have the keyboard avoiding view. What I want as well is I wanna put in the spinner. Uh, and that spinner will be visible when, well, true is probably the worst case to, uh, the worst example to use this. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna have some state in here. We anyway need some state for our app. So we wanna capture the email, the password, and we're gonna use loading, and therefore we're gonna set visible to loading. We need two functions. We need const on sign in pressed. Um, and we'll do something. It will actually uh, be an async function. And then we have on uh, sign in. Yeah, we have on sign in and of course on sign up. Well, we need to call our API. Um, this will be handled with our authentication context. This is still building. It takes so much time. Um, so we're going to get back to that later. Um, next to our spinner, I just want to put a little text element saying meet me. So that will be like my header. Um, and then I will do a subheader as well. Uh, something like, I don't know, the fastest way to meet. And we need some styling. So for the header, we can use like a really big font size. Um, font size, let's use, actually let's use like something like 30. Uh, I will align this in the center and I will give it some margin bottom mm, of like 10. And then we also have our subheader styling. And the subheader will have a font size of, I don't know, 20, 18, something like that. Uh, also align the center. And since we're gonna have the buttons below, uh, we're going to use margin bottom 40. Okay, you can't see this yet because my app is already starting on my device. That is pretty good news. Um, so on my device, I will quickly log in. Uh, one note, if you use your real tablet or iPhone or Android phone or whatever, um, it might not immediately pick up your local expo. Oh no, I hate that button. Um, your expo environment. So as you can see, the meetings app, it's not able to, or it's still fetching service. So in that case, I usually log in with my expo uh, account. And once I got that, I can press refresh and then I see the app coming up here. Um, and let's see if this works. I really hope, I genuinely hope. Yes, here is the app on our 
iPad as well. Nice. Now I can give you both previews from time to time. So here we see my text already. Um, I will now hit save in here. And yeah, uh, this looks so horrible. But uh, we see we get live reload with my iPad making this a bit bigger. So I will show this not the whole time because then we don't really have place to develop. But I should be able now to reload this app and it actually shows the same text. So we have our Expo pre-built application running on a simulator and my iPad and I will later also deploy it to my iPhone. Very good. That means um, we're able to attach our styling here. So this will get styles.header and the second one will get styles.subheader. Okay, um, is the subheader text also aligned? Uh, subheader text align center. Uh, we have just, yeah, we should probably just use the right and then it looks like this. Okay, I don't know, my iPad is really going crazy um, whenever it, it, it's safe, it updates. So it's better that we look at the simulator. I think you're gonna have a better time with that. All right, let's place two text inputs below our current text. So auto capitalize none, a placeholder with the email, value is the email and on change text, this will be um, the email. And then we of course need some styling for the input field. So I would like to use my primary color from the constants and use a simple border width and a specific height. I will just put this up a bit. I think then you can see it better. And I will place a second text input right below this using pretty much the same setup, but now this is for the password. Good, so we are able to capture this. And by the way, let me show you something. So in the simulator, all of this looks cool until you open the hardware keyboard. Then it usually is above your input fields, but now you see it moves up um, and moves back down because we are using the keyboard avoiding view. So we only get that if I would change this back to a standard view, this wouldn't work. Good. Uh, let's see, let's put a button. Oh, this iPad preview is getting making me really nervous. It's like updating all the time on the side. I definitely need to put this somewhere out of my view, my 20 screens here. Okay, touchable opacity, on press. Uh, I wanna sign in, mostly correct. Touchable opacity, please just add the import. What's wrong with you? Yeah, it, make sure you don't import it from uh, reanimated. Please just add it from React Native uh, as always. And then I kind of messed up somewhere else, I guess. Oh no, touchable opacity from React Native. Where did we go wrong, my friends? Okay, we did not close the touchable opacity. Yeah, better. Okay, sign in. And of course, we need some styling for that button as well. So let's add that to our styling with a bit of margin uh, aligning the items. And then we can put this simply here, styles, styles dot button. And voila, almost good, almost good. Uh, only the text should probably be white now. Uh, so let's just do it in here, color uh, white. And then we have an almost beautiful button. So on sign in pressed and I will add a second button below. For that I will just use a button actually from React Native. Uh, title, don't have an account, sign up. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, on press I wanna call on sign up and I wanna use the primary color. That's actually accurate, okay. Voila. And after reloading I also wanna show you this which doesn't look great yet. So on an iPad I don't really wanna use the full width. So let's add some padding to this. We could do this to the container. Uh, I want to add a padding horizontal of not a fixed value, but a percentage. So I'll add 20%. Um, that will make the views here a bit smaller, but it definitely also looks better here. We could also make this, well, we could check for the width of the device. Hmm, do we want to do that? I wonder, do you want to? I, I assume you kind of want to, right? Um, so we can get the width and the height of the device. We're gonna do this again uh, in our other pages. We can do get the width and the height, and now we could check if the width is bigger than the height. 
because that usually indicates we're on a tablet. That's not the perfect way, but since we don't really have like container queries with React Native and CSS, let's do this. If the width is greater than, yeah, 500 would also work. Uh, if this is the case, I will actually use something like, I don't know, we can even use probably 40%. Um, and otherwise, uh, well, otherwise I just want to use 20. No, 40 is probably too big, maybe 30. Okay, so you see here we got this and on iPad, we now also have a nice little padding to both sides of 30%. Pretty cool, right? I mean, yeah, I can still like turn my iPad. Oh no, I can't actually, I, I can't turn my iPad. What did I do? I didn't want to do this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, iPad preview. Yeah, come back to me. <laughs> oh my, it's so fun to record with different like input devices. Okay, anyway, let's put this back to the side. We have kind of finished the UI for this place. And now we need to call the actual functionality. To call this, we can make a simple API call in our two functions that we prepared, but that's not really what I want to do. I instead want to wrap a whole authentication context around our app and provide it to the rest of the app as hooks. Sounds more uh, challenging than it actually is. Let's create a new file at context slash auth context dot tsx. Okay, let's create a new folder and within that folder, uh, we're gonna create some stuff. So what I want is definitely my secure store and I knew, I kind of felt like I didn't install that block. Let's just install these. So you should have probably done this before. I, I also thought I had done it before. Apparently I didn't. Um, so I will do it install now. That should be fine. Okay. Now this um, is a setup I used before. So. I want to define an interface auth props and that defines what we get from this context. We have an initialized boolean which we can set after we've loaded initially the token. We have three functions on register, on login and on logout. And then we have the actual auth state which will give us information about the current user including the user ID and the authentication state of that user. Um, then we will create um, or define a token key. So I can call this like my stream token or your JWT token or whatever you got. And then we can grab our API URL as we've specified it in our environment file. Now it's time to create the context and I will use a partial. If I don't use a partial, it will complain about this object. So TypeScript is getting mad if you don't do it like this. And then I can create my custom hook. So I can say export const use auth equals and I will just make it easier for us to use the actual functionalities later in our pages and I will return use context with our auth context. Okay and that's it. Export it and everyone's happy. And within the login page which is my index I now got access to the stuff from the context. So in here I should now be able to destructure this. I don't know if I already if I can get this, but that would be the dream. Yeah, so use all allows me to get on login and it will also allow me to get on register. Good. Okay, so we have that connection. I just need to make sure that I now also wrap my context around the app. And since we haven't really prepared that, <laughs> let's do that now. So by now we only have that hook, but I actually want to create this auth provider that we can then span around our application. So we usually have children here and then we would render something uh, and return it. Uh, that means in the end, so at the uh, complete end of this function, we're gonna have something like return auth context dot provider. So that's how you create your own custom context. You put the children here in the middle so that renders just everything that's a child of this context. And to the value, I will pass a value object. And this value object will just define my functions. Okay, we'll put this here. So we still need to implement this. Now I've done this a few times before, so I will just walk you through uh, how you can do this. Um, it's not really related to stream, it's more a general thing of how you can protect your React applications. Um, this context will keep track of my state uh, like this. 
and it will also have the initialized value. Now, the first thing that I will usually do is I want to load the stored token when the app is initialized. So you can do this with an use effect hook. And within use effect, I specify that I want to call my load token. I will grab or try to grab the key from the secure store. Uh, and if I get the data, I will pass it back to an object because actually you can only store a string in there. And then I will update my auth state with that information and set initialized to true. This is the boot up when, when your application loads, it will just check if you already had a JWT stored. Now, if you wanna register a user, we can make a post request uh, to our API. And also if we want to make a login, those are pretty much the same. So if I wanna make a login, I could go like this. I would make a fetch request to my API and the login URL that we deployed. Method should be post, JSON, and I would just put in my email and password to that URL and get the JSON result. Now, remember when we tried this out, and I think, do I still have this open somewhere here? Uh, can I still get back into like what I did here? No, that's not it. Uh, maybe here, yeah, here it should be. Uh, so remember, uh, this gave me, uh, I can't see the response anymore, right? Uh, invalid credentials. Well, yeah, but that response gave us the JSON token. So that was a token and there was also a user ID and email included. I am only interested in getting that token. Remember that is the stream client token and that is now attached to the user. So after a login, we want that token, which we need to initialize our connection to stream. So I update my state here in the context. I also write the token to my secure store and then I return the result. And the function for the register is pretty much the same. Actually, I think I could have used exactly the same. I think only the URL changes. So we make the post request to register now. We set my auth, it's, it's exactly the same. I should have just like done one function. Okay, uh, in your case, maybe you can like clean this up and make it one function, okay? Refactoring, that's the word I was looking for, <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, we also wanna have a little lockout function. So that would def uh, delete all the information from my secure store and set everything in the auth state back to null. And with that in place, you can now add all these functions and states to your value. And as it is provided here, um, it will be available through the context. Okay, that was a lot of information. Again, the note, you can find it here on GitHub as well as I walked you through this. Uh, it's a pretty standard setup of an authentication context. Now, if we want to put that to use, and now it gets actually interesting. Um, oh, cannot find native module expo secure store. No, not really. Didn't I just install it? Uh, expo install secure. Oh, I think it was not bundled with my application. And now it's getting mad. And I think it, I really hope it was like it was, let's see, I can, yes, thank you, reload. Oh no, I know. Do I really have to, uh, I don't want to. Um, yeah, so I, apparently that was not bundled and I do need to make a new pre-build. Okay, well, well, well. Um, I actually kind of want to just run this in the simulator for now. So I will just do another NPX. Uh, do we need to do a new pre-build or I think this should update it. Let's wait. Let's see. It's a good case. So if you messed up something, if you did not install all dependencies up front, um, just probably do another NPX Expo run iOS. Maybe we need to do another NPX Expo pre-build, but this looks pretty promising to me. So uh, I will just kill the application here anyway uh, and wait for it to come back in a second because we still have some configuration left to do as we now need to wrap our authentication provider around my whole application to provide the functionality and so we can actually secure our application. Uh, nice, the app comes back up here so I'm in good faith that this will yeah now work great. Um, 
actually we could now wrap it up in the login since we got access to my on login and on register we can call this so if i press sign in i first want to set my loading to true and then i want to try to uh, perform my call so const result equals uh, await on login uh, and I know this will be defined, so I can just add an exclamation mark here. And then I will put a lock in the next line. Notice, in this case, we don't really need to do like the routing to the inside page. Um, that will be done at a different place. So, I will catch any errors. Let's say I will just use uh, alert from React Native and then call alert with um, yeah, whatever error could not log in. Let's just keep it like this. And finally, I want to hide my loading again. Good. We can now copy this over to on sign up because again, uh, in our case, it's pretty much exactly the same. So this will do on register. Um, I just want to make sure that I get a different lock here. I will save this and I'm hopefully fine. Good. Let's get back to our layout. So we have the auth provider around the app. And now we want to react to changes. We want to react if the user actually logs in. If the user logs in, I want to bring them to an inside area. So I will do a group here and group this inside and then index.tsx. Uh, did I name this correctly? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so this will be like inside page. Uh, we're going to have to define a little little different stuff here uh, since in the inside area we're going to also have our own layout. But for now, let's not uh, worry about that too much. What we want to do is in the initial layout, I want to check now if we're actually authenticated. And we can grab that. We can get now the auth state. Auth state. And we can also get the initialized value from our use auth hook that we can at this point use since the initial layout is already, oh, come on, I don't want that, is already a child of the auth provider. Otherwise, we wouldn't have access to this. We can then use a uh, use effect here and the close it and for the dependencies i want to pass in the auth state and initialize so if those change this use effect should run again now if we are not initialized if this is not initialized i can just return there's nothing to be done in case we haven't even lowered the initial token if we have that uh we can do something else we can check um first of all we can check if we are in the uh, auth group. So if the route the user tries to access is actually requiring authentication. And we can check this by getting the segments and we can use the expo router for that. So you can say use uh, segments equals use segments. So that will give you access to the different segments in the URL. Remember with the expo router we have file based routing and basically just URLs. Uh, we don't really have the screens like with react navigation. I mean, it's used under the hood, but still we think in URLs in this case. So we can check now if segments at the index zero is equal to um, inside. Okay, that is the folder name I used here for my inside layout. Now I can check if um, auth state is authenticated. So the user is authenticated and we're not in auth group. So that means the user tries to access the login page. We can just tell the router to go to the inside page. So we can just say, please go to inside. Uh, why are you mad? Okay, because the URL is wrong. That's the URL. Okay, in another case, else if, if the auth state is not authenticated, in that case, we can just direct back to the outside. Well, the login in our case is just slash. Um, in that case, we also might do something else uh, in a second, but <laughs> for now, let's keep it like it is. So you notice so far we have basically only used React and authentication context. And now I also want to introduce um, the stream SDK to this. Why? Because 
for the stream SDK to initialize, to create a connection, to do video, audio, chat, we need a key. Uh, and we only get that key once we're authenticated by our API. So once we get this, we can actually talk about um, having a connection to stream. And we can now finally do this. I will use a state here um, to initialize the client. So the client is what we need. We're gonna use state and we actually, uh, we're not using any, we are of the type stream video uh, video client. Why do we not getting any import? I hope I installed at least this. Come on, I installed all the packages. Like, like, like what is going on? Uh, import stream video client from uh, add stream IO react native uh, SDK, I think. Oh, really? Add stream video react native SDK. I installed all of the stuff I had in my list. Let's see it. Let me, let me. Where did I install it otherwise? Like, I ran all these commands npx install stream IO. Let's check the package JSON. I can't believe this. Um, we got all of that. We got all of that. It is installed. It was definitely installed. So something else is, um, maybe I got the, yeah, okay. Well, I just got that one wrong. That one's on me. Okay, so now TypeScript complaining because this can also be null. Okay, if you look at the docs here, in the quick start section, you will see that usually they're initializing the client um, directly in the pages. That can work, of course, but I really would like to wrap this around my uh, whole app and make it tied to the authentication. So this is what I wanna do. So I will also now import stream video uh, here. That is the actual um, child I wanna wrap around my app. And now I will not just return this, uh, I will put this in a fragment so we can make something optional here. And I can check if we don't have a client yet. In that case, I want to render my login exactly like we had it in here. So if I don't have a client, we're going to do it just like we did before. But if I do have a client, and yeah, I know we can also do like client question mark and then whatever, but I want to do it like this. I felt this looks better in this case. In this case, I want to wrap stream video around my app and pass in the client here. And then we also wrap our app with the um, overlay provider. Why are not getting any imports today? So overlay provider is required to make our chat work correctly and we can get it from stream chat expo. Um, overlay provider. So this goes around our app and then we have slot, which will just render all of our other routes. Once again, we had this before we had, come on, we had slot from, from expo router. And additionally, I will also now add toast. Yeah, I'm not expecting to get any uh, toast or any, any code completion working. So toast comes from React Native toast message. What have we done? We have basically just made a little if statement. If we don't have a client, we're not authenticated, we just render our outside stack for login, for registration. Now, if that changes and client is initialized, we can show everything else that we have to render. And we're gonna wrap this now with the stream video for video and the overlay provider for the chat. And also we add our little toast stuff in here. Okay, um, I, I honestly don't think that this is a problem that I need to fix here. Um, if it was linked error, native commitment is null, to fix this, why is it null? Oh no, I don't really want to, no. <laughs> Okay, we can now uh, start as we don't really have the client initialized yet. Uh, we can do this in here, but I actually want to do a separate use effect to make apparent what we're doing with uh, stream. So this one will just have the auth state as a dependency. Uh -huh. Okay, close this. And with just the auth state, we can check how the auth state behaves. So if we are not authenticated or if we, now let's start in the positive case. If we are authenticated, 
Um, and I want to just make sure that we also have the right token and auth state dot token is set. In that case, I can init my client, initialize my client. So let's do like a console lock here, um, creating client. And we can now do this like this. First of all, we create a user object, which is actually the type user. I think we can add this from, uh, from stream again. And that user just needs an ID. And that ID is of course my auth state user ID. So that is the user ID we created in the system. The user ID you can find in the um, stream explorer. So that would be like S M E H whatever. Okay. This is the user. And then I will wrap this in a try catch. I will create my client. So this is like my local client now using new stream video client. And then as the object, we need the API key. So API key, that's the stream key we imported from our environment. Uh, did we import that? No, we haven't done that yet, right? Um, no. So from our environment, we can, of course, grab our stream access key. Remember, this is a public key. This is not secret information. So we use the stream key. We use our user. So stream knows, ah, okay, this is user 4573. And then we use the token. This is the token we got through our node API from stream. So that's extremely important. Um, then exclamation mark, and then we got this. All right, so this will create our client. And once we got the client, of course, we can call set client to update our client. I'll also add a catch block here. So catch any error. Uh, and for now, I will just like console log error creating client. Okay, why are you complaining about something you really shouldn't? React Native Community Net Info is null. Um, that package was installed somewhere. I'm I'm pretty sure, um, but I feel like none of my installation commands did work. So maybe that one didn't work as well. Um, let's see, React Native uh, Community is it really not installed? This is impossible i pasted in all the installation commands how in the world is that possible that reg native community net info wasn't there like do we have stream chat and, and stuff installed um like do we have stream chat expo installed stream no it must be on the stream chat expo yeah we got stream chat expo reg native Ah, native part of reanimated doesn't seem to be initialized. Now we're getting a fancy host of other issues. Oh my, yeah. I think it's time for another NPX Expo run iOS to update all the dependencies that we installed. I think, I hope I have now everything. Do I have reanimated? Yeah, reanimated is installed at least. I honestly don't know. I, I ran, is Gorham installed? Yeah, Gorham is installed. That's so funny. I have no idea. Like it's just installed half of my dependencies, but not the other half. Well, 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 well. Okay, so we have our logic in place. Um, we have a listener. If we are authenticated, then good things will come to us. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, up here, this will also be triggered again. We could now do it up here or down here. Mm, I think it doesn't matter too much where we do this. I kind of feel like I want to do it here. So when our auth state changes to unauthenticated, meaning user signed out, user locked out, whatever, we have to call client.disconnect user. Client disconnect user. So that's important to basically kill our connection. It's like the, the login part to stream. You don't want to keep that uh, up. Native part of reanimated, uh, trying to run reanimated on unsupported. Uh, oh my, oh my, oh my. Um, I mean, ooh, oh yeah. Well, I think at this point, it's good for me to stop and just, just do a new pre-build 
uh, and I will kill this, do a new pre-build, and then All come back to it. All right, so I ran the NPX Expo pre-build with clean. Then I also killed the run uh, command for my device, and I run NPX Expo start with clear. So if you got problems with reanimated, usually you need to run this command once, um, and this will now also, once again, just run my development build. So hopefully we should be able to see something. So uh, let's see. I will add some locks in here, uh, authenticated and in auth group, and I will add a lock here, not authenticated. So now we should see some locks. Actually, I will open the browser because the locks here are getting kind of crowded, so I will use it in here. Let's see. If I now reload my application, it starts and I'm not authenticated. So not authenticated. Let's try and create a user. Uh, uh -huh, de, uh -huh, de. Oh, uh, no, that's a password. <laughs> okay, let's try sign in. Could not log in. Let's create sign up. And on sign up pressed. Oh, that was an error. Uh, that's good. But on sign up, yeah, we got the token. So we registered the user. That certainly worked. Uh, what didn't work was mm, something else related to maybe stream. Let's do, let's check if we now do a reload. Um, uh, now my app is not connected. I love it when it goes to the background and it happens. Um, if I do a reload, it's actually calling creating client, but something during the creation of the client is off. So let's see, uh, 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 we're creating the client. So this is my user, um, creating client. I will just lock out my whole auth state at this point. Um, then we create the client and we set the client lock put in here client created uh, we are using the right token so this is now really the tricky part of making this work we have the auth state token we have the user we have the stream key did I add the correct stream key is this the right stream key I think it is <laughs> I think it is uh, so there are a few things that could go wrong here. Uh, let's see again. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Sign in. And there was a problem sending a log message. Okay, well. Uh, value. Okay, yeah, I think. Authenticated true user ID. Is this my, this is K7 something? This is not really the user ID. This is the user ID. I feel like we're not using the right user ID. I will try, is this the key? <laughs> well, there are a few things. Okay, yep, the key is correct. Um, the key is correct, that is good news, but something else is wrong. And we're not able to really, at this point, get this. So I think it crashes because the auth state is not correctly set. Are we using the auth state in the context correctly? Mm -hmm. We have our auth state here. We update the auth state. We add it to the value and we use it uh, for our provider down here. All of this looks pretty good to me, but something certainly isn't working yet. So let's see again if I do reload. Uh, uh, JW oh, there was something interesting. Have you seen it? I have seen it. JWT signature is not valid. Make sure the token is created using the secret for API key something. Oh, no, I know the problem. You you got two ideas? Well, I previously deployed my railway application for a different stream chat. And of course, I specified a different environment, a different, uh, different, different environment, right? Production environment variable. Where is actually the development? I don't see it. Um, production. Here it is. Under settings. I must have somewhere seen this. So the stream key was created with the wrong API. So this is my information here. And I need to exchange this and actually use that information. So if I take a look at this. This is not the information uh, in here. So you see, it's different. All right, let's change that. Let's change this. So my app ID, um, I actually don't really need the app ID, uh, but I set it up anyway. 
My stream API key is the default key. So that is this one going in here, hit save. And then I will copy my secret, edit, update it. Okay, redeploy schedule. We will redeploy schedule when you're done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Can you just do a redeploy please now? Uh, can I tell this to redeploy? Yeah, I think I can. You know, I could also cut out parts like these, but I kind of want to keep this inside as you will eventually encounter the same problems with, with some keys, something not working. And I really wanted to show you how you get down and then find the actual problem. So now, uh, let's see, I should be able to reload my application. Okay, um, the client created is wrong, so I will do this again. I will now do simon at galaxies.dev with a password and I want to trigger the sign up and I hope that this will create the user uh, creating client creating client and we have a result with a token and the user uh, quick confirmation check yes this is the user that I just created and if I now press sign in I should be able to go there was a problem well that was a problem of the lock message uh, but overall I should now have the right object here Let's do a reload. Oh no, I didn't want to get there. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Do a reload. And I think at this point, creating client, authenticated true, this is my stuff and client created. Um, and I feel so much better because we got here without an error. And then we, yeah, client created. That means we're just a tiny step away from making this work. Let me show you what we need. We need in my inside page a new layout. So we want to have an inside layout as well. And in this layout, uh, we're going to do React Native Functional Export. I will call this layout. And what we return is another stack. So I think at this point, the only problem we have is that the navigation here with our files is not set up correctly. Um, you can specify some options. So let me just do for our stack, I want to just use a different header color and the header tint color. And then for our inside page, I want to define stack.screen, name index, um, options, actually not header shown false, but I will say something like title, uh, meeting rooms, meeting rooms, and then hit save. We also have my index files, so upon login simon at galaxies.dev we should be brought to the inside page let's just do a quick check um, so if my auth state changes uh, i will be brought to slash inside yeah let's give this a try oh no no uh, i thought i had done it unsign and press result as we do get uh, back an interesting result, by the way. Um, in my login page, await on register. What is on register returning? Like on register, it totally returns some some BS or on sign in pressed. We do await the login, but it's like horrible what we get back from this. Oh, set on state. Oh yeah, we return like the result of the API call. We don't really return the JSON or anything useful. We could probably change this to return uh, our JSON or the user state at some point. That would most likely make more sense than just this. Uh, but anyway, that's not the actual problem. The actual problem is that in our layout file where we react at the top level to the changes here, we are not creating the client correctly. Uh, and I don't know exactly why. So let me check this now out. Okay, a small thing can make a big difference. So there was just one thing that was wrong and that was here. So if we are authenticated and not yet in the inside area, the router should take us to the inside area. As you can see now on reload, I do have a token and I'm immediately taken to the inside area. Um, if I hit save again, I'm here. To complete this, let me just quickly add a button here. So in our inside layout file, where we define the header, we can now say for our index page, I want to add a header right. And that header should be a simple lockout button. So let's do arrow function and let's wrap this in a touchable opacity from React Native. 
Um, on press, I want to do something. Yeah, we'll just accept what Copilot gave me to not mess this up. But what I really want is I want to get on logout from our custom hook. Use auth. Okay, and then we can just call this in our function. Um, here we go. On logout and the text. Uh, we actually don't need a text. Let's just do an icon, ionicons. You know, on some days you just don't get any code code. Some days it works perfectly and I get ionicons and everything working out of the box and some days Visual Studio just doesn't like me at all. I don't know. Today is one of those days where Visual Studio is not liking me and he's... Uh, and, oh no. Yeah, well, anyway. Let's stop the rant. So, here we go. I can log out. Um, we see I'm not authenticated anymore. Uh, we're back on the login page. I can do a refresh. I'm on the login page. Um, actually, there is one transition that we probably shouldn't do. So this comes from not authenticated. Um, maybe we should check and we're in auth group. Yes, I think that makes sense. So now if I reload, we are just on the login page. I put in my credentials. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I press sign in and we're inside. We finally got this. And the most important part here is not that we implemented authentication with React Native. You can, of course, do this all the time. But that we now tied the stream video client, the initialization of the connection to stream and the stream SDK to our authentication. That is really the critical part here. And we made it work so that now when we are in that inside area, we're actually wrapped oops, by a stream video client. And that means we can easily access all the cool stuff from stream, audio, video, chat in our application. And we are sure that it works because the user is authenticated. I'm getting really excited about this and we have the tokens. So if you've come this far, congratulations, because now the fun of implementing stream video and audio actually begins. All right, now it's time to work on the inside area. And I can also highly recommend, uh, recommend the tutorials here in the docs. So you just need to make sure you have the right path, video, docs, React Native, and then tutorials, uh, because they're basically tutorials for React Native, React, Swells, whatever. Um, and in here, you're gonna find a video call tutorial. We're gonna use parts of this as well, but mostly we're gonna just do our own style. Um, I have now added or changed my device to be my actual iOS iPhone device here. And what we want to do now is we want to create this meetings room page. We we'll display a few like predefined meetings room that you could join. And then of course we need a new page. Now we'll do this in a new folder just, just because. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then React Native Functional Export page. Yeah, whenever I mess up something in here, it's like going horrible with my preview. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. This is has to be a new feature uh, of, of the Reflector app. I don't know. Uh, it probably previously yeah used to work pretty well. Now not. Okay, so this is my page, which I will access with a specific ID because every call will have an ID. We don't have to worry about this right now. Mm-hmm. We can, however, integrate that page in our inside layout stack. So what we got this here, we can now also say stack.screen name. And now the name is a bit more complicated as the name is like room slash ID because that's the actual path to that file. Uh, then we can say options, something like title room. Okay. Oh, come on. Will this now happen on every, every save? I haven't seen that before, like, like why? Honestly, never seen that before. Oh, that's going to be a pretty tough one. Eh, well, we're gonna figure that out somehow. Okay, so inside page, this is where we wanna work. Why are you not coming back? Like, why do you just stay black? We should probably, I mean, while we develop that page, I could still bring this up in uh, not device, so I could run iOS. Uh, npx run iOS and then I would just do it in the simulator like we had before. I mean, we're just creating that page. We're not doing any video call yes, uh, yet. So let's do it like this. That should work. Okay. Now, as I said, on that page, 
Mm, I want to implement a few things. So I want to wrap this in a scroll view just to make sure we can cover everything. Mm, oh, come on, please. <laughs> not again, not again. React Native style sheet goes down here. And then we have a little container styling as always with Flex 1. And I'll use a background color, uh, background color of white. Uh, of course, we also need to add our style sheet up here and then we can say styles.container to make that page happy. Property scroll view does not exist. Yeah, why, why should you be able to figure that out automatically? That is definitely asking too much from this page. Um, next, we need functions. We need on, mm, on start meeting. Uh, it's going to be an async function that will start a meeting. And then we also will add a function to join a meeting. So you can also just like always join a meeting with an ID. That is the idea here. I also, I think I added some, some dummy information. Let me bring this in. I'll just put this under assets data. So I added four epic <laughs> images here. You can use just random stuff. And I said, Okay, these are going to be my rooms. I just want to have like some dummy data that we can iterate. Maybe you have some public rooms and you want to allow joining them for your company. Maybe people can hang out in those rooms. It's just an idea. Uh, I will put this at the bottom and I will probably need like a wrapper styling for that. Uh, wrapper styling. So that wrapper will align the items in the center. Uh, well, let's write the rest in a second. Uh, styles dot wrapper and then we have our rooms uh, where do we get the rooms from we should probably import them right can you do this automatically visual studio just one thing today oh thank you so much thank you so much I'm I'm generally pleased about that so this means here are all the rooms I want to iterate um, we could do it like that but of course I usually don't want to do it like that also what is missing Mm, no, I think I think it should be look like this. Okay, so we already see our four rooms. That's good. Uh, that means we can now introduce our images and all the other stuff to it. Additionally, I would like this to be clickable. So I will make this an Expo Router link component. I will still keep key. Uh, and I will also now add an href. And that href will go to slash inside slash uh, room slash the ID of that uh, room that should be room dot ID and we need to of course use string uh, like this and then we have it and as we have some components inside we should also put as child around it so now we could click on these and we would actually get to that meeting room and we would have access to the ID. So then on that page, we can have all the controls for our video chat. So this is just like uh, a little, well, making it a little bit cooler. I will wrap the rest now in a touchable opacity. Uh, I assume we have not added the styling yet, but not a big problem. I also want to use an image in the background. So you can use, oh, I didn't know about this before, image background and not do any fancy other stuff. Um, let's see, source should be room.img. Uh, for the style, I will probably pass in my own style. Uh, let's say this should be an image style, style.image. And putting it down here. Um, probably, let's just do like with 200 hate for now, for now. We're gonna change that in a second because we're gonna really make sure that it works on all the platforms. Um, that is my image background component. Within the images, I also wanna have a little overlay. So I will add, um, let's not do too much at once, Simon. Yeah, I'm, I know, sorry, sorry about that. Let's do one thing first. Okay, we have the image background, uh, we're using this, but for the, why is it not rendering? Uh, type prop source supplied image expected of time. Uh, room dot image room. I also want to have the index here, uh, just in case. Mm. Do we need like a specific image? I mean, I have the width and the height defined for styles image. 
Uh, I probably need to put something on top of it. I probably have to put something here. Yeah, then we can actually see the name. I still don't see the background though. Um, I think the problem is that we can pass in the room image directly to the source. Yeah, so here we go. Those are our four rooms. Not the best styling, so let's change this a bit. Um, I will add to the view an overlay styling. So let's say overlay. And that overlay will get an absolute position like this. So top left, right, bottom. It should span the full uh, the full image. It will just be like a, a dark overlay on top of it. So if I now attach the styling here, styles.overlay, we see we have like a nice la a dark overlay. I also added rounded borders and we still need to add that to the image background. Um, so I think we can or should directly add it to the components. I think we need to use image style in here and then border radius uh, 10. Yeah, and then we see now those little edges here are fixed as well. Okay, good. Um, for my wrapper, did we actually really implement the styling? I feel like this is not the correct way how I wanted it. Uh, but probably let's fix the card first. So the card and the text inside should most likely have a white color uh, font size. Actually, let's use 30 and let's assign the text to the center. And then uh, we want to give that to our text here, style, styles.text. And then we have this cool little overlay. Now we just need to work on our wrapper so it actually aligns the items correctly. So I will say justify content center. And I want to do something about the flex direction. So if I use the flex direction row, it will look like this. Um, there's a problem. So here on uh, my small screen, that actually looks horrible. If I refresh this on my iPad, oh, shaking an iPad is such an awkward thing. Um, I think on my iPad it should actually look and render correctly. Well, it looks uh, also not too great. <laughs> uh, let's add a gap. Okay, so now it looks like this, not too bad. But actually on this device, I would like to use column and not row. So we can do this with the same trick we used before. I will add width and height here. And then we're gonna check down here in my styling. Uh, where is it? Flex direction row. So if width is greater than height, if the width is greater than the height, I wanna use row and otherwise I wanna use column. Okay, so now on this screen, I don't know if you can see this, it is still a row. Um, on this screen, we have columns. But I feel like uh, something is not working out 100% here yet. Um, and I wonder what part it is. Um, also, I would like to add some padding to my scroll view here. So that one will get a content container style of padding bottom 20 to make sure that this here looks fine. Okay, yeah, that's better. I still, okay, yeah, the width is the problem. The width of the image is the problem. So now we can do the same in here. If the width is greater than the height, uh, I wanna use a fixed value. And otherwise, so what I wanna use in this case is, I want to have all four in here. So I could probably use width, oops, width divided by four minus the gap size. And otherwise I will just use width minus the padding. Okay, yeah, that looks better. I think that should work for us. Yeah, we can click them, should look nice. Also, if I do the awkward refresh here, this is so awkward again. Uh, we should have, I think at least, I should probably show that iPad again in here. Um, but it's probably, is it rendering correctly? Oh no, if I also turn on, oh no, what did I do? What did I do? It should look somewhat like this now, but there's still something missing. I wanna also have some controls above, but anyway, it's rendering in a row and we have the right spacing, so that is Initially a good start. Um, now I wanna have two buttons above this to start a meeting or to join a meeting. 
so we want to do this above the wrapper and then we can really dive into playing around with the stream SDK. Uh, we're going to set up some styling here. I don't want to define that yet. Uh, and in the view, I want to put in a touchable opacity. Touchable. Oh no, Copilot. I'm not accepting that. This is way too much for me. <laughs> touchable opacity. Um, for that touchable opacity uh, on press, we want to start a meeting. So we can just pass in on start meeting. And we probably need some styling as well. So let's say styles.button. And let's define this. I think we had the button styling before. Mm, I mean, let's just use it like this with a fixed background color from our colors. Now taking the secondary color and justifying all the content and giving it a bit of margin and padding. Nothing too fancy. So you see, we get this button up here. Um, I want to put in an Ionicon in that one. So let's just use Ionicons. Oh, that import word. Did you see that? We're making progress. That means we're on the right track. Video cam outline. That looks good. And I will also put in some text. Uh, with the styles, styles.button text, which we still need to define. And that one will stay start new meeting. And button text should just be uh, a bit bigger font size. So here we go, start new meeting. Mm, I probably want to make my button the icon dark and not white. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and now we're just gonna duplicate that code. This will call on join meeting uh, and it will say not start meeting but join meeting by ID and then we're going to use something like business uh, outline. So this is our view in general. I wanted to have some styling here so I will say uh, flex direction row and I want to have space between so I can just say justify content uh, oops, next line, space between, and then would be one line. Mm, the problem here, the problem here is that we now have it look like this again here. Um, I mean, it's not too bad, but it shouldn't be like this, right? Um, on full screen, we should, I mean, on the small screen, those should... Can we just wrap them? Mm. Uh, I don't think so. So we have our container styling applied to the scroll view. Um, we have the wrapper. Where is the wrapper place? The wrapper is just down there. Um, hmm. I mean, for for an iPad that actually looks okay, um, flex direction row and justify content center. Uh, what if we just get rid of this? I mean, then we have it below each other. <clears throat> Not a big deal. We could probably once again use what we had uh, with, with and hate. I will just keep it like it is for now. Um, just so we can finally move into the actual streaming as you're eager to see what we can do. So I will just now finally add one thing and that is a divider. Uh, so we can put this between the buttons and our views. Uh, and then add some code here in front of the wrapper, which will put in something like start new meeting or this, and then or join uh, our page. Um, I feel like someone is aligning our stuff here really crazy. Um, yeah, let's just keep it like this is, like it is, uh, and not add any styling for now. Also, can you reload we sometimes need you okay this was again part of the preparation so when we now click on something here uh, if we click this we would join a call if I press this I actually want to show a little prompt so on join meeting we can use the alert library uh, alert and then I would use a prompt and that would allow me to say okay the headline is join meeting then I can have a message like Please enter your call ID. Um, and then I have an input field. And I can handle the ID that was put into that field. So I can just like lock out the ID. 
at that point or what I want to do is I want to push to the next page. So pushing to that page, we only need an ID on that page and that page will handle all the connection to stream um, very nicely. So const router equals use router. So we can use the expo router from code and just call router dot push and we want to push to inside slash room and then the ID uh, that's usually not working well. Let's try it like this. If I do it like this, I think it's a bit better. ID and then just making sure we're not messing up the brackets. Yeah, as I did, of course. Um, yeah, that's better. So now when I click join meeting, we can enter some ID and it would take us to that page. And on start meeting, we just need to create like a random ID and go to that page. So let's just do a random ID like this and then we can do the same router push inside room and we would be on that page. Good, this is the general page and we're done with that page. That is good news because now we can close actually most here and really focus on what's going on in our room. So now is the point where we really add the functionalities from stream. We had in the beginning the server setup where we added the authentication to create tokens. Then in the next part, we added the authentication where we've wrapped our stream client around our app. So that was really important to have our stream video client here around our app because we can now use the hooks since we're basically now living in that slot here and we can use all the hooks on that page. For example, we could now say something like const client equals use stream video client and that would give us access to the client to perform different things with that client and that is really really powerful. So let's add a use effect log here and let's add client, um, actually not client as a dependency. I think I want to add call as a dependency. So we want to add another state here. That is the actual call. And then we'll use state exactly. And the call interface from React Native Video SDK. So when somebody comes on this page, they should now join the call. If for some reason we don't have a client uh, or we don't have a call yet, we will just return here. Uh, or if we already have a call, sorry, uh, I misspelled that. If we already have a call, then we already joined that call. Otherwise, we're gonna join our call, uh, something like this, and then we would call join call afterwards. So this is the basic setup. How do we approach the view for that page? Well. The view for that page should have a style uh, flex one so we can use all the available space. And then I will put in a spinner first of all. So that spinner should be visible if we don't have a call. And then we can wrap everything else in the stream call. And to the stream call, just like we initially passed a provider to the stream client, uh, we now pass a call object in here and that's just our call. Uh, that also means at this point I should be really sure that I have a call. Um, so how can we make that sure? Well, we can just say if at this point before we return, if we don't have a call at this point, I will return null. So I will not render anything. And that means once we actually get to render the view elements, we will certainly have that call object. Um, do I already have to put something in there? Um, I think so, yeah. So if we look this up, uh, I think they had a nice example of the basic structure of how it should look like. So we have the stream video with a client, then we have the stream call, and then we have like the, the call UI inside. So stream video, stream call. Uh, and we can use for that call, first of all, a general uh, UI. Are they sharing that here? I think at some point they might show it rendering the video UI exactly. And that is the call content. So inside of my stream call, I will put a call content now. And can I just close this? Yeah, let's give this a try. Um, so far we can't join anything because we need to extract the ID from the URL. So let's destructure this by getting the ID and use local search params from the expo router. And we can type this if we want to. Uh, you could say something like ID string and then close it. 
And with that ID, we can now finally join our call. I will, for now, just add a log in here, uh, joining call and put in the ID. And that is like our last dummy run. So joining, meeting, uh, whatever. If I now click here, joining call 1001. If I start a new meeting, I would have just a random ID. So that means we have set up everything so far to actually join that call. Let's see, if I wanna join a call, the only thing I need to do is I create a call with my client and I call call. Okay, I call call, that is super. Um, if we check out the signature here, we have a type of the call and we have an ID. So for the type, I will use default and for the ID, I will of course use my ID. What does the type mean? Well, you can check this out inside your stream application. So if you go under video, and call types, you will find the different ones. So we are using default, you could also use development, live stream, or just audio room. If I check out default, I will do something like microphone on by default. I will disable this for a reason, because I had a lot of echo going on if I now join with different devices into that call, uh, and that's usually a big problem. Um, let's see, I think we're joining a call, so I would just have to set my call object um, and I have to exactly also join that call. So I can call call.join and I wanna also pass in uh, create true. So if the call does not yet exist for some reason because nobody's in the call, I would also create it. And then I would finally set my call state, which means at that point, this should finally render. So let's hit save in here. It refreshes and now I'm pretty sure that this preview won't work anymore. Um, it will most likely fail so let me uh, use my own device here uh, and I will go into public informations. What would happen? It would like to access my camera, it would like to access my microphone and boom did it did it did it here is me and we already see some nice controls pretty much out of the box. So you see these controls down here you um, this indicator of network quality, this whole view down here. Uh, we have an object up here. And everything that you see in here looks pretty good for a video call, but you can customize all of that. And we will later customize that. For now, I just wanna make sure that it and the stuff we do in here actually works. Um, I, will, I don't know why my microphone is not muted, but I will definitely do it. Uh, which room did I join? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but I will try and join this as well. Okay, so my iPad at Galaxies also would like to join that call. Um, so here's my iPad. Hello, iPad. And here, hello, it's me. <laughs> okay, the, my iPad is really not that good. So it's kind of messing up the stuff. I will, can I also now like join with Android or is this asking too much? Um, I just want to like show you a few cool things, but this is like the view with two people inside. Um, I don't know if I can get like my, my third person into the room as well. Uh, my Android device, I really tried to deploy this to all possible devices, let's see. Um, allow while using the app, while using the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to prevent. Okay, yeah, I stopped it finally, whew, that was close call. Uh, okay, so you see, whenever more people join the call, I don't know, on uh, Android I actually see the camera. Um, sometimes it's not showing up in some use, but Android just leave, then just leave. But you see, it just also automatically changed that screen, and, um, how it presents the view. Could I just like place it somewhere cool so you can see something? Uh, well, can I just make, I can also make, make myself bigger. Would that be cool? Like, would you enjoy this? This is what I see. So we have a lot of inception going on here. All right, I'm uh, gonna just place it here. I can also, of course, not you, uh, change the camera. So we can also go to that camera and then can display all the device farm here and what I see. Okay, so you see that with pretty basic setup of just a few lines, we have now added a massive, massive video call into our application. Like, this is really big. Um, we only have the, the provider around the app with the client, but on this page, there's not a whole lot we're doing. We, like, we have three lines, 
And yeah, thanks for, for hiding this view. That was totally not what I wanted, Reflector. Um, so we have like three lines in this page. And these three lines here convert to this whole layout of all the things. And yes, you can customize all these things uh, if you want to. Now, uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, this now gets really, really funny. First of all, when we click on the red button to leave a call, uh, and I will probably now put it, I think it's better if I put it here so you can see like the whole object. Uh, let's do it like this. Uh, and then we'll reduce this and this. Actually, we should now be able to see in the Explorer under calls that, well, currently there seems to be nobody in that call. So I will also leave that. Um, but what I would really like to do is when I click that red button, I would like to go back to my home screen. So I will add a new function that I will call const go to home screen, uh, which is an async function. And that will, will call my router. Do we already add that? Yeah. Uh, and I want to go pop or back. Yeah, back. And now I can customize my call content. That's where the fun really, really starts. So for call content, I will now say that on hang up called, on hang up call handler, I will go to home screen. Let's hit save. And of course, my, my device is totally freaking out. So now if I press the red button, um, I don't know if I'm even still connected here or not. I feel like I'm not really great connected. Let's go in and let's leave it and we're back. So that part of the customization already worked pretty good. Uh, on top of that, I would also like to use like a, almost like a split view. So for my iPad device, I would like to have a chat next to the live stream. So for that, we need to put what we have already in a little container. Uh, can we, I can connect with my MacBook again. So yeah, video and streaming to my Mac is usually a bit problematic, but we're gonna try our best here. So let's wrap this, put this to the side and let's just focus on this. So this is currently the room on an iPad device. Um, I will wrap this now inside of a view. So the whole call content and the view will get styling styles.container. So this will be a custom container. Rank native style sheet goes down here. Uh -huh. And then for the container, we want to say it should use flex one. But uh, for the flex direction, we're going to use the same hack that we had on our other pages. So we want to check if the width is bigger than the height. Let's put this up here. Uh, getting the dimensions, good. And so flex direction, if width is greater than height, I want to use row, otherwise column. And that will help us on a small device. We will just have the same column layout, but on bigger devices, I can now render another um, view here. And let's just put a text in here for now. This is where I want to render my chat in a second. We forgot to add text up here, so let's change that. And now everything's reloading and everything's messing around. Um, we see, okay, the chat is a bit small. So the chat is just showing up here. That means I should give that chat some more uh, width. Let's see. Uh, we got the container here. And I will put this into like a chat container now. Style styles dot chat container. And that chat container will also have flex one because if the chat container does have flex one as well, it will take up 50% of the width as well. We can give it a white background. I will also align everything in the center and justify content center. And with that in place on a small device here, is this my iPhone or is that, I don't know what it is actually. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, where's my iPad? iPad? Here. And voila, we see the difference. On an iPad, we have a flex direction row setup. 
So we got 50% of the screen left for my chat open. And here we could have the chat at the bottom. However, actually the chat here, that will look very, very small inside that view. So in order to make that better, we will later just put a custom uh, bottom sheet in here that we can drag open and, and show the chat. So for now, um, but we could probably still have the chat if we wanted to. Um, let's see, let's, let's just display the chat. Let's, let's see how it looks with the chat. We can do this easily, really easily at this point. Under components, let's create a chat view.tsx. Okay, man, I don't know why this reload is it's so, <laughs> it's hard to send that. Probably we're gonna do this differently in a second. Um, that chat view needs some props. So let's define type props up here. And what it needs is the channel ID. So that could be pretty much exactly what we already have uh, on our call page. And we can now the structure this channel ID props and then place our uh, chat view into our room. So what we currently had this, I will just add chat view. And the channel ID is just the ID on that page. So nothing really fancy. Where did we go wrong? Up here, of course. Um, I kind of don't like that it's doing this all the time. So I will stop this now. And instead of npx expo run, uh, I will just run npx expo dash dash uh, dev client. Uh, if you do it like this, I think it should just bring up the development build. And if I know, do a reload. We are still loading from here. Um, maybe it's a problem of the pre-build. I, I think I never used a pre-build with Reflector or some dependencies changed. I really don't like this flickering. Um, I hope it's gone now. If not, we gotta live with that. So now I have my chat view here. And at this point, we can use not everything that we have before, but still our auth token and the information. So let's get started by creating now a chat client. And we can use the stream chat package for that. Um, do we need stream chat expo? I think I never used stream chat expo. I think I always used stream chat from stream chat. I think that one was used. Uh, and then you can call get instance. And to get instance, we need to pass a key, which is once again my stream key. And we had that before. We can grab that simply from our environment. And additionally, I want to get my auth state here so we can easily use the hook we prepared in the beginning. And finally, we want to keep track of the actual channel. So once we've joined something, uh, I want to use state, a bit of state here. Uh, for the type, we actually can get the type. So this should be a channel type. Uh, we're gonna, can we import channel type from something? Uh, I think we, we need to be careful here with the names. So I'm going to import channel as channel type from stream chat. Um, and then use undefined here. I think if we use undefined, we could also just leave it out. That would be pretty much the same, right? Yeah, um, but that channel type is also, we can even specify this further. Uh, that is default stream chat generic. So use, you can use TypeScript really, really well with stream as well. Okay, now in my view, uh, I will or try to render the chat client, but to actually make that work, we need to connect to the chat using the ID. So let's add a use effect block in here. And with the use effect block, we're gonna uh, add an empty dependency array so that this only runs once. And I will call this const connect to channel. It's going to be an async function. And we will call connect to channel afterwards. And we will also clean up afterwards. So we can add a return block in use effect. Quick learning if you never knew this. In use effect, when the page unmounts, you can return something and this code runs. So you can uh, call channel dot stop watching to make sure we're not watching it. And you can also call chat client dot disconnect user because that will anyway connect new once we create another chat view. In our connect to channel, uh, we first of all create our user just like we did when we tried to connect to um, the video SDK. 
Then we use the chat client we already have and use connect user with our user and the token. And so this is once again where our old state and the token come in really, really handy as we just need to extract it from our hook here. And then we can create the channel by calling channel equals chat client dot channel messaging and channel ID. So again, this is a type and you can now find this under chat messaging, channel types. Um, uh, here's the messaging channel. I think we're gonna see a problem. I just think, just, uh, just keep this in mind that I said we probably see a problem here. So let's say set channel and to watch for all the channels, we just call a for watch all the changes, we call channel dot watch. This should be it. Um, since we're rendering it, something, if I go to that page, should render and we should see probably something. Let's see if I, oh my, okay. I still hate shaking these devices. Shaking an iPhone is so much easier. Um, okay, let's see if I go from my iPhone to this channel. I probably or I expect actually to see a problem with the chat view. Mm. Is the chat view implemented? Yes, it is. I mean, it should. Um, okay, the code up here, is that running? I don't feel like it's running, but maybe, let's see. So we're not really rendering the chat view, but the cool thing is about the React, uh, the, the stream chat. I think I used this before in a bigger Angular tutorial. I thought it's pretty easy to once again get a great UI and I think this is one of the important things about stream. You really get high class components. As you see with this video, it just looks great. This is all going through stream through their servers and we get these components out of the box that we can then customize. So um, I think this basically speaks for itself. If we have a chat client and a channel, I want to render my chat. So stream chat expo client that we pass in is our chat client. And then you can render for the chat actually different things. So this uh, tutorial is mostly about the video. I just wanted to integrate chat as well because then you have like a really powerful thing going on. So you can have like a message list, you can have channel lists, you can have inputs. Uh, I will just use the default here. So I only want to display this one channel. So I will use channel and pass in the channel that we have. Okay, um, that import comes from Stream Chat Expo as well. And then I want to render a message list component and I want to render a message input component. Okay, if we don't have that, uh, what I want to render is just a view with a text that says loading chat. Okay, so while the chat is not yet ready, we should see that uh, message. Um, now let's see. Okay, it's actually doing the reload automatically. And error loading messages. I mean, that's progress. And remember how about five minutes ago I said I expect a problem. So both zebra and user tokens are not set. It's actually not what I expected, but <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, let's try to get back into one of these and I want to press J just in case we get another error. So then let's go here and let's see what we got. Oh, we actually don't have a problem. Look, look, see here, watch this. We got a chat, we got a chat. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, hey there my George's friends. Okay, and this is exactly the problem I, uh, or another problem I wanted to bring up. If I go into that chat down there, um, you see, first of all, it's not respecting the safe area. Second thing, we had the same problem with the keyboard above the chat. So that is a big problem. If I, of course, go into my iPad chat. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, if I go into my iPad chat, which is also not coming up because I really think that the user, yes, now, now I can finally show you this. So iPad chat, not loading because loading messages for this channel fails. If that happens to you, you look, 
Stream chat code, get or create channel failed with error user. Something with role user is not allowed to perform action. Read channel in scope messaging. This is due to the rule system in stream. So you can change this. If we go into our chat messaging and the roles and permissions and then look for the user, user. Uh, and then I want to, what was it? Like uh, read channel, right? Read, um, no scope. I mean, we're in the messaging scope. So we can also see all. Here are all the permissions the user has or has not. Uh, yeah, we wanna show everything. And then we should find somewhere that the user uh, read channel. Here is the permission, read channel, and the user does not have that permission yet. So I will toggle that on uh, if I can. Why can't I? Uh, where can I enable editing, edit? And then I will go down, we can search read channel, uh, read channel, enable and save, confirm. So the rules are updated. And let's see, if I now go back to my iPad uh, here, and let's see if I enter that room again. Loading chat and voila, you can't send messages in this chat. Well, that is progress. <laughs> That means we can read the channel. Uh, now I probably also need another role for writing. Uh, what is the write? Is it like send um, or message? Update message, skip message, run message, read message, flag, delete, create message. Create allows to send a message. Well, that basic rule should probably be enabled for that user. So let's enable that one as well. And then we can go back to my application. No, not that one, the iPad one. Where's my iPad one? iPad? iPad, why Why you leave exactly? You were like destroying the whole arc of, uh, I brought up this whole arc of tension between making it not work and then making it work with the rolls and then exactly in the moment when it should work, that iPad disappears. I hate you so much, iPad. So public informations or whatever I call that room, Skipping that and finally I can message in that room and if I check out my iPhone I should be able to see the messages. So let's see This is a test. It works actually pretty well here on the iPad. I can send this and of course doo -doo 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 -doo, Chat easy. So the chat from stream is also super powerful. There's a lot you can do um, in here I can have like commands and uh, a whole sort of other things. I don't wanna go too crazy with the chat. So let's just keep the chat as it is. As I said, we can uh, improve this here a tiny bit. So if you don't wanna see the preview on uh, that device um, like this, what you can do is we can create a custom uh, bottom sheet component. So I have a full tutorial on creating a custom bottom sheet. So let, let me just show you the quick basics for this. For that, you can create a new component and call this custom bottom sheet.tsx and pass in the following. Again, link on GitHub. So on this custom bottom sheet, I have a bottom sheet implementation using Gorehom's bottom sheet, which is again, a really, really great implementation. Um, and that bottom sheet now has the bottom sheet view, a keyboard avoiding view, and finally the chat view inside. So we're passing the channel ID to the bottom sheet and the bottom sheet then creates the actual chat view. So a tiny bit different setup. And if you wanna use that, you can go back to the room where we previously had our logic. And now uh, right here after the called content, we can say something like if with is greater than hate, um, then I want to render it in the following way. In that case, I want to have the setup like we have it right now. If that's not the case, I want to render the custom bottom sheet. So we will actually only use it for smaller devices. For iPads uh, or tablets, we're still going to use our flex row layout here with the 50-50 setup within that row. Um, but if we save everything like this, um, again, on an iPad, nothing really should change. 
But on here, we should notice that now at the bottom, we have a bottom sheet and that our stream call is actually taking up the whole space. Uh, no. Oh, that was close. Okay, <laughs> so um, as you can see, I now have that bottom sheet with the input and I can have a epic, nice little uh, chat in here from iOS device. And of course, my Android device could join that chat as well. Okay, this was big. This was a big start, um, but we also saw that now with the bottom sheet in place, I can't see my video controls. So now let's talk about customizing that video view. Um, if we want to customize that, there are different ways to do this. Do I still have like uh, the video call? So if you check out the video UI components here in stream, we have different, is that, there was like an overview somewhere. Was it here? Yeah. So these are all the things you can customize. The call controls at the bottom, the participants label, the call top view, an incoming call view, an outgoing call. You can even have a lobby network quality indicator, video fallback, video renderer, reactions and runtime layout switching. So uh, maybe start with that one actually, because that's pretty easy to add. So we can do all of this on the call content. That is the main thing we want to affect now. So for the call content, I will now set my layout to grid. That should uh, render already a different view. And, or actually, I think it only renders a different view if I have multiple people. So maybe from, from Android, I will once again join. Okay, so you see now everyone is, no, no, no. Uh, on top of each other. Okay, so here we go. Tiny bit different setup. Okay, that Android view is really awkward. I don't know what's going on with you, Android. Uh, you're really strange. <laughs> that camera, I don't know. It looks like it's on drugs. <laughs> oh my, having so much fun with this. Okay, uh, Android, please please just leave. Um, that is the layout. Um, then we had a call top view. So that would be at the top of this screen. We can pass in whatever we want. So call top view and we can have a custom component here. So let's just create in our components a new file and I will call this uh, custom top view dot TSX. Oh no, I, oh no, I messed up the name. TSX and then a React Native functional export which is our custom top component. Uh, let's just hit save and let's see if we introduce that in here um, as our component for top. So passing in custom top view, we should see it at the top of the call right here, custom top view. Um, and we can of course now do whatever we want with that custom top view. Um, the cool thing is that we got once again access to different hooks. So for example, the use participants hook, use participants from, um, no, from use call state hooks is what we can use to show, for example, how many participants we have in that call. Uh, or you can use a few other things. So we can now say cons participants equals use participants. So this use call state hook is what we can, you, can we like get into the type of it? We can get the call state, use call in recording, use is call live, is blocked. So you can get all this information about the actual call as you're a child of that call and you get access to these hooks. So now I could just render something like this. I could say participants.length in here. And then I would render that, I think at this time, like two people, right? Two people in the view. Um, if you wanna make this a bit more beautiful, you could just add some styling like this. So it takes up 75% of the top width and renders like this with a slightly transparent background. And it just looks good up there. Okay, that is one part. Um, then I also wanna change my call controls because as you can see, they are still hidden uh, at the bottom behind my new bottom sheet. So let's add another component and this will be custom call controls.tsx. So in the custom call controls, um, we wanna do a few things. First of all, I wanna render them. <laughs> so let's go back to the room 
and where we already added the custom top view, we can add custom call controls. Is it custom call controls? I, uh, I think it's just call controls. Call controls equals custom call controls. Okay, so on my iPad, the call controls are now gone and we can define our own custom call controls. Um, I will put in some styling down here so we actually get that. So I will now position it right. So this should be somewhere here uh, with a difference 160 from top um, and some, some styling behind it, but nothing fancy. And let's see, if we want to render that, I will attach this to my view. So view style equals styles dot uh, custom controller, whatever. And once this reloads, we see my custom call controls. Now, how do I get back the cool controls I actually had from stream in the beginning? Well, the good thing is there are a lot of components that we can still render in here. So I can now import all of these things from um, from the expo oh, from the stream SDK from stream video react native SDK. So we have a toggle audio button, toggle video, toggle face camera or hang up call button, exactly the buttons we had before. We just need access to the call, but getting the call is as easy as using a hook. So const call equals use call and voila, we have the call. So this should of course be const call. Additionally, um, I need the props in here. So let's access the props. Uh, these should be call control props. And now if I hit save, it refreshes once again, and we have back the full controls that we had before in our view. And again, you could also customize these to your needs. You could have your own buttons and just call, call microphone toggle, call camera toggle, camera flip, or whatever you want. And one more thing that I really like is reactions. So you can also add reactions. Um, for reactions, you can add an array like this using stream reaction type. So I will define these possible reactions here. Uh, smile, raise hand, fireworks, like, whatever. And now we can add a button down here. So I can add a reaction button. You can actually have a reaction list as well. Ah, that's interesting. And you say support, oops, reaction button. Supported reactions are my reactions. Uh, what's the problem with that? I feel like the reaction button is probably from, uh, let's see, F let's, let's not use it from stream chat expo. Let's use it from the video. We're still in the video domain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's reactions button to be honest. Uh, yeah. And the refresh comes and we have this button and there is my list. And if I press the heart, we see it up here. <laughs> I really like this. So these are like some, just some, some playful things we can introduce. Uh, and you're gonna see these reactions in other views up here actually. Um, that's pretty cool, nice. Uh, if I have my call. Um, or you can also just manually send them if you want. So you can add a function, let's say const on like, if you just wanna have like a, like a quick like. You can say uh, a reaction, taking our like code. And then you can use this on the call and call send reaction, sending your reaction. And now we just need a custom button. So as we are in control of this component, I can also add my own React Native button. Uh, title like, uh, on press like. And for the color, I will use colors uh, dot secondary. So really, not bound to the default we get from stream, although that is great, but I can also now press like and we see up here, the like appeared on that stream. So we have now introduced a bunch of customizations. We have a custom top view. Uh, we have custom call controls. We have changed the general layout. We have changed the uh, on hang up call, uh, on hang up handler. I think that's what I wanted to say. And you can just check out here the documentation on the different things that you could also customize. So really, really, it follows always the same setup. You create a custom component and then you pass it to the actual call content. Um, that is certainly I wanted to show you. 
Finally, there is one more thing, there's always one more thing that I want to show you, and that is how you can um, how you can also react to some changes. So on my uh, room page here, I will add a new effect block. Use effect. Now let's close it and we will use, um, yeah, we will do it in here. So it's pretty much the same like before. Oh no, we had a client. So this will just run once. Um, I want to also add like a button up in the top corner. So I will access navigation using use navigation from Expo Router. So a little like little crossover of stream knowledge and Expo Router knowledge. You can always access the navigation under the hood. And if you want this, you can add a button so we can probably like share that meeting. So yeah, let's add a function to share the meeting async function and that would use the share API from React Native and call share and then say something like message um, join my meeting and the interesting thing here is um, if I now add this I can add a touchable opacity and ionicons and at the top I would have this nice simple button up here to share this message with someone. Um, the interesting thing is you could, with the Expo Router, now have a setup uh, where you actually use your own app uh, universal link. So if you had something like this, you can register for a URL scheme with your um, React Native application. And since we used file-based routing, you'd have just inside room and the idea of the room. And if somebody would have your application installed and gets the message, they could on a device click that link and r arrive exactly here on this page in your room. So that's really the cool thing about React um, and Expo Router. And that's just one additional thing. Uh, a second additional thing is that you can actually now listen to different events that happen. So you yeah, can do it like this. Uh, you can say cons unsubscribe equals client. And I will say client definitely exists on. So client on helps you to catch different events. You can use one of these events like call ended, call started, call whatever, or you can say call all. Then you would get all the events. So event would be of the type stream video event. Um, and within this, uh, I feel like I have too many brackets. Yeah, that's better. Uh, in here, you can always log out the event type. And for example, you could say if there's a new reaction, I would log new reaction. So now uh, if I do it like this, the like from somewhere, we get event new reaction. And we've done the reaction up here. So you can catch all sorts of events. For example, you can have, um, if participant joins this, I would like to use my toast library that I initially installed. Or if a participant leaves the call, I can also show this. Let's give this a try. I will disconnect from my iPad. And we see user left, say goodbye to iPad galaxies. And if the user comes back in, uh, Say hello to iPad at Galaxies. So that helps us to get even more granular control over the different um, events that could happen in our application. Cool, I think we covered most of the things I wanted to show you, including the customization. We haven't tried everything. So I haven't tried, if I now start a new meeting, um, if I start a new meeting, then I should in theory, See in my explorer under calls, yeah, a random meeting with one person included. And I could now use that uh, and send it to someone else and that person could join that call. I wanna actually do this in here as well. So I will leave this because we have still also have the join meeting by ID function. If you wanna test things out, what you can do is you can just create a call up here um, and with that call, okay, let's turn the mic off because otherwise we have problems. Okay, I will join that call. Um, and now, oh no, I don't know what's going on. I probably messed up my camera now, M might be the case. Um, but you have the call ID now. So with that call ID, I could now say join meeting. Uh, that would open the overlay. Oh, and it would open up a really horrible overlay. So it is, oh my.
why I hear myself. Anyway, um, I probably messed up the camera now. I will end the call in here, but this is just a way to test your functionality as well. And as you've seen with the call ID up here, you are now also able to join that call. And you can join it from both your tablet devices where we have a UI with a split setup. So we're gonna have the, the video on the one hand side, on the other side we have a nice chat and on mobile we have the chat in wrapped in a bottom sheet. We have custom controls and with that I think we covered everything about the stream live chat. All right, and that's it for today. I hope at this point you have a powerful live video audio chat application with React Native. I know the setup takes some time, the API, connecting, authentication, but once you got all of that, dropping in the chat into your app or the video, it is like three to five lines of code with the stream SDK and they just abstract everything that is really, really powerful under the hood. So if you need video audio capabilities in your application, there's pretty much no other container next to stream and it is probably the best solution on the market for these kind of features. If you enjoyed it, of course, check it out, getstream.io. Again, thanks for sponsoring this video. I really enjoyed working with it. And if you want the code, link is right below the video. And of course, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to get notified about the upcoming React Native videos. I will catch you next time. Maybe I'll catch you on Galaxies where you can learn epic React Native skills as well. Check it out, galaxies.dev. And then I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.